I'm going to show you one of the most beautiful, easy to create marbles I've ever done. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. This, today we're going to do a bathroom vanity. This is the actual piece of the vanity that we're going to do. We've chosen to do a three quarter inch Medex, which is a waterproof, water resistant uh, MDF. And we use it in all of our bathroom and kitchen installs. The reason we like to use the Medex, it, it is so moisture resistant. We actually did some research, put it out on our patio and we left it for over a year unprotected and it is perfect. So we highly recommend uh, that brand. We're going to do, the homeowner chose to do just the three quarter inch and not do an inch and a half reveal around the front. She didn't want that real big chunky look. She wanted to keep it very uh, small because it's a very, very small bathroom. So that's why we're just doing the three quarter inch. All, uh, we've also prepped it by routering the edges with a uh, quarter inch round over bit and sanded it. The reason we do that is we want the epoxy to be able to roll over very nicely and flow. If you have a 90 degree angle on your edge, what happens, the epoxy gets to that edge and as it's curing, it's slowing down, it uh, builds up surface tension and then your epoxy doesn't flow over. So we highly recommend that if you have any 90 degree angles on the surface that you're pouring, that you sand that down and create that round. Then we came in and we painted two coats of our stone coat countertop undercoating. I love that product because it has no ammonia like latex paints. You can use a latex paint. If you do, you need to let that paint off gas for at least 24 hours before you pour your epoxy. With our stone coat undercoating, we only have to let that dry for about four hours. So it does save you some time. All right, so we have taped the edges. You'll notice that. And the reason we're doing that is the technique that we are using is what I consider and what I call a melded marble. We're going to put more product per square inch than we normally do. We normally do three ounces per square foot on most of our finishes, but in this particular finish, we're doing six ounces. So if we did not tape our edges and we put six ounces of product on the surface, what's gonna happen as that product starts to self level, all of our beautiful pattern is gonna end up on the table and we don't want that. By taping it, we're forcing the product to stay on the top until it starts to gel and then it slows down on its movement. We take the tape off and it very, very slowly goes over the edge. So that's why we do that. We also like to tape our edges if we're doing an exotic pour. So that's another technique that you'll want to, to do that. All right, here's what we're starting with. We're going to do a beautiful marble. We're gonna use white opaque dye from Alumilite. We're going to use white shimmer mica, absolutely one of my new favorite products. It's by Color Passion. We will also have that on our website. Then everyone's favorite diamond dust. We'll put a little bit of that in our clear. And then just resin. It is a very highly pigmented um, paste available on our website, or you can check out artisttilldeath.com. Use uh, coupon code RK3 for a little discount. She's got tons of colors. This color happens to be silver gray. And then for a very, very light accent color, we're going to be using the mica and blue earth. Just a tiny bit of this. This is going to pull in the tile that the homeowner is using in her bathroom and it is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so that's our color palette. Here's what we've done so far. We mixed up our six ounces per square foot. We had a little bit left in the bucket, the clear. So what I'm gonna do is come over and do what I call kind of a grease coat, skim coat, lube coat, 
whatever you want to call it. But what this is going to do is just give the epoxy a slick surface so that when we start doing our finish, it will easily move and flow. Now, I love using this squeegee. It's kind of my new favorite tool, but you can use a Bondo spreader. You can use your hand. I love this, especially if you're doing a really large area, the um, squeegee works really well. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All you're trying to do is cover the surface, make sure you get up to your edges and you'll be good to go. If you even have leftover color in your cups, sometimes if I'm doing an exotic pour and I'm mixing, a lot of times I'll just take that color that's left over in those cups and I'll tump them upside down and I'll use that as my grease coat. So after I spread out my grease coat, I kind of like to torch it a little bit. All that's gonna do is warm it up so that when I put my products on the table, it'll flow out a little bit better. All right, so here's how we mixed up our products. We have a cup of the white opaque, but then we also came in with a, a little bit less and we tinted it white. However, we didn't tint it opaque. So this is our opaque white. But then we came in with a translucent white where we just barely put any of that product. And by using two different levels of that sheen, we're gonna build depth. Then we also came in with our white shimmer. We have just about as much as the white opaque. Then with our silver gray, we did the same thing. We mixed up a very opaque and a very translucent of those two colors. Then we have a cup of clear. And the only thing that we have in the clear is the diamond dust. And then you can see the ratio of how much we're using of the tint, I mean, uh, of the accent. And we probably won't even use all of that. All right, so I'm gonna go in first with our white opaque. And I'm just gonna very random pour it down. I don't want a pattern. I want it to be very random. And then I'm gonna save just a little bit in my cup. Then I'm gonna come in with the white shimmer. And it's gonna be beautiful. It's white on white, but the sheens are so different that that's where we're starting to get some amazing depth. And I'm just kind of filling in the dead space. Again, I'm gonna leave just a little bit in my cup. All right, now we're gonna come in with the opaque silver gray. Now with that, I'm gonna be kind of sparingly. I don't have to use everything that's in my cup. I can always add more. I can never take anything away. So I used about half that I mixed up. Now I'm gonna come in with the, you know what, I'm gonna come in with my translucent white. All right, so this is the opaque dye, tinted very transparent. So you could see it's gonna give me some depth and I'm just kind of pouring that in areas that are blank. Filling in that dead space. And then I'll just kind of pour the rest of it over the top. Leaving in the cup. All right, now I'm gonna come over with the translucent silver gray. Again, it's gonna be very light. I don't wanna put a lot in there. All right, so what's really cool is you can see the difference between the translucent silver gray and the opaque silver gray. This is the white opaque and this is the translucent white. So you can see we're already starting to build depth. 
Now I'm gonna come in with my clear and the clear, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna put the clear in bigger pockets because I want that diamond dust to almost look like it's embedded in the rock and make it look really natural. So by pouring little pockets of that, you kind of create that illusion. And then I'm gonna spread a little bit over the rest of the, not a lot, just, and I am gonna save quite a bit of that in my cup. All right, now for the highlight. And like I said, you can always come back and add more of this highlight. So I'm just putting a tiny bit. Now I'm gonna to torch a little. Here comes the magic. All right, take my spreader. Now I'm gonna drag and create the marble. I'm not pushing my squeegee all the way to down to the bottom. I'm just basically letting the weight of the squeegee drag along top of the surface. And I'm going different directions. Don't get in a pattern where you're going all one direction. Long strokes, all different directions. And that is just creates the most natural looking marble. Now you wanna make sure that you push that up to the edges. So when we pull that tape, we have product that will start going over that edge. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely amazing. Now you don't, this is super important guys, you don't wanna over meld. You just wanna meld enough to get those products to where they're touching each other and they're softly creating a marble. If you meld too much, all you're doing is making one color by just barely hitting it and barely melding it, you create such a stunning finish and it looks like actual marble. By using different mediums, we're using mica powders, we're using paste, we're using the opaque dye. As you meld all of those together, they start to kind of fight and they create some amazing uh, textures. I love this, look at that. All right, so we are going to leave this and let it start to self-level. Now, if you're doing an on-site pour, meaning you're, go over, you're going over existing countertops, something that you can't tilt, then you're gonna just let this kind of self-level on its own. But because I can tilt this small piece and tilting gives such a cool um, movement and makes it look very natural, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit and I'm not gonna tilt it a lot. If you tilt your piece a lot, you get these little finger looking uh, designs and I don't want that. I just barely want it to move. Then I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit and also what that's gonna do, it's gonna help that product roll up next to my edges. So I know I have plenty of that product when I pull my tape to go over my edge. Now you don't want it to move fast. Like I said, you want it to move very slowly. All right, then I'm gonna tilt this end. By tilting, you're also softening that pattern. You're softening your lines. Now I've got a little bit of surface tension down here. I'm gonna tap it. By tapping that surface tension, you're gonna help that product flow a little easier. All right, now we're gonna tilt it back the other way. And even just by tilting, you're getting those products to kind of slide over one another. And just that creates some really cool effects. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so what we've done is we've added a little bit more of the blue in strategic areas. And this time I wanna use a Bondo spreader instead of my big squeegee, I can be a little more detailed. So I'm gonna come in and move that and marble it out. The homeowner wanted just a little bit more of that blue to shine through. And the reason I pulled it in next to this edge is when I pull that tape, I'm gonna be able to have that color go over the edge. I don't wanna over meld that color. Remember, I want that to be a very soft marble. All right, you want some more? You like that? Is that good? Okay, so my homeowner just gave me the thumbs up. She said, it looks good. All righty, love it, love it, love it. We're gonna let this sit about 10 more minutes 
So it's been on the surface now about 20 minutes. So I can feel it starting to gel up a little bit and that's what we want before we go to the next step. Okay guys, this could be a finish all on its own, but guess what? We're gonna go to the next step. I am going to create some natural looking fracture lines. If you've ever looked at marble, you'll see there's a lot of natural cracks it almost looks like where the stone has shifted over the hundreds of years as it's being made. So all of that yummy that I left in my cups, I'm now gonna show you what I'm gonna do with them. They're starting to get thick, okay? Cause it's been 30 minutes now, they've been in the cup. So they're a little thicker. You don't wanna do this when your epoxy's fresh because all that will happen is it'll just blend in. You wanna let this set up and let it start to get a little uh, thick. All right, so I'm gonna come in with a little bit on my stick and I'm just gonna roll it, drip it all over. And it's super important that you don't do this as a pattern, that everything is very random. Some are thicker than others. Some are very, very, now they look distinct right now, but they're not gonna stay like that. They're gonna start to move, they're gonna start to shift and they're gonna start to look very natural. Now that was my white opaque. This is my white shimmer. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now you wanna to try to go straight lines. You don't wanna get in the middle and do a U-turn. So you, that way it just looks a little bit more natural. You also don't wanna make X's right in front of you. I love to do the same thing with my diamond dust. Now by doing it with your diamond dust, you create unbelievable fracture lines that look like they go all the way through the stone. I also like to do little pockets of the diamond dust. Looks like little pockets of mineral. Those will stretch out and look amazing. Okay, we can even come with a little bit of the gray. I'm not gonna do a lot of the gray. In fact, I'm gonna do the translucent gray because I don't want these gray lines to take over. It's just gonna be very lightly and I'm not gonna do as many of those. Okay, so now this is my favorite part. When you take isopropyl alcohol, which is what's in this bottle, and your epoxy starting to kind of set up a little bit and you've used mica powder, it doesn't affect your paste or your dyes but the mica powder, when you hit with the alcohol, it's going to cause the coolest effect. So watch this. Also, by spritzing it light, you're gonna pop any little micro bubbles that you may have on the surface. Now I've set my sprayer at a kind of a fine, not a real fine mist, but kind of a fine droplet. And now I'm just gonna come over here and mist the top. Now you don't wanna do too much if you get too much alcohol on your surface, it's gonna cause your epoxy to be very runny. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera, but look at the texture that it's causing with the mica powder. Also, look at the lacing that that alcohol is causing with the white opaque dye. All right, so it's been about total, about 35 minutes, and we're gonna pull the tape. The epoxy's starting to roll over. We actually could have waited probably another 15, maybe even 20 minutes, depending on uh, your temperature, you'll wanna gauge that. It's a little runny in my opinion. I'd like to see it a little thicker, but this is absolutely gonna work. I like to, like I said, I like to see it a little bit thicker. Now, as it's starting to roll over, what I'll do is I'll come and I'll run my hand under this edge and push that epoxy up under the edge so that those drips don't form on the edge. We also round over the bottom edge as well as that top edge so we don't have a 90 degree right along this bottom. A lot of times if uh, you leave that at a 90 degree angle, your drips will come over and they'll develop a little lip right here that you can actually feel. So if you're doing over existing 
countertops, especially laminate that has that 90 degree angle, if you could hit it with your sander, try to run that under, it would be best. If you can't, at least take your hand ever so often and rub that material so it goes ahead and rolls under and doesn't build up a ledge. You can also take those drips on your hand if you need to add material anywhere and just help it run. What I'm doing here is I'm picking up, coming in here and getting the extra and I'm coming over here where we're a little bit shy and I'm adding more material and helping that flow down and giving us a really pretty edge. All right, so it's been 24 hours. Our color coat is dry and now it's time to apply a clear flood coat. The flood coat is the same product the uh, art coat and we're going to be going three ounces per square foot so there's no need to tape our edges the only uh, additional thing that i'm going to be adding to our flood coat is a little bit of diamond dust that's really the only thing i like to add to my uh, flood coat because i don't want to uh, compromise the integrity of the epoxy by adding any other colorants all right, so first what we're gonna do is sand with 220 to create a tooth for our flood coat to grab. Now you can use an orbital sander to do this, but you don't want to use that on your edges. You wanna do your edges by hand and be very mindful that you don't burn through your edges. Now I'm not gonna sand this back edge. This is gonna be against the wall. Once I sand, I'll clean with isopropyl alcohol. Now I'm gonna come in with my clear flood coat. Now, if you're doing a large area, you can trial this out, but since it's just a small piece, I'm gonna just use my hands. Also, when I use my hands, I don't have to use a chop brush, so there's no chance that I will get a bristle. Once I get the surface, then I'll roll my product over the edge. And again, I'll be running my fingers underneath so that epoxy will roll underneath the edge and give me a nice, pretty edge and a good seal underneath that edge. I'll torch three times. And when I torch, I'm only gonna come in about two inches away from my surface and I'll move and cover the surface 100%. Don't torch with big areas and don't hold your torch in one spot for too long, especially if you're doing white, you could really cause it to yellow. I'll torch it, I'll torch it three times and then I'll leave it alone. I'll turn all the airflow off in our room and I will walk away. Now, after 24 hours, we're gonna come back and we will apply in this case, we're gonna do the Gloss Ultimate Top Coat. We do have a detailed video on doing a flood coat. We will link that in the description below of this video. All right, guys, what do you think? I absolutely love this finish. It is by far one of my favorite marbles that I've ever done. The color combination, everything about it, the depth, I absolutely love. If you agree and you like this video, give me a thumbs up and leave me some comments. Let me know maybe what colors you would do and where would you put this in your home. Subscribe to our channel. Guys, by the time this airs, we may be at 50,000. I'm not sure, but help us get over that hill. I would appreciate it. All of these products that we used are available on our website, rk3designs.com check us out. We do offer free shipping for orders over $100 and we do same day shipping as long as you order before noon central time. I want to invite all of you guys to join our new epoxy insiders. It's called RK3 Designs Epoxy Insiders. Check us out on Facebook. All right guys until next week you know the routine. Don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. See you next week.